Hi guys, welcome back to Battle with Ola. This is Mujola Olua and I'm super thrilled to be here once again. Uh, today we want to talk about a very important topic. <laughs> we want to talk about defamation, defamation of character if you have it. So uh, this is a very important topic because it keeps coming up, you know, especially on social media in contemporary times because of uh, the way that uh, there's uh, a democratization of sharing information. So uh, sometimes people don't know where to draw the line. And sometimes the line can be pretty blurry. So today we'll talk about defamation. We'll talk about the types of defamation, the classes, you know, how it's categorized, uh, what you need to prove defamation, when you can say that you've been defamed and you can come to court, what the courts will need you to prove and what the courts will grant you if you're successful. That's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So I want to make a shout out to the members of the channel, those who have joined. Don't forget that there are some perks attached to joining. So if you have paid good money, you know, I consider any amount you give towards uh, the promotion of the channel good money, you know. So if you have paid good money for that, please activate the perks. You know, you know what I'm talking about if you have signed up. So please activate and use those perks. And I'm happy to provide, you know, those things that have been promised. Thank you very much. Also, if you're leaving a comment on the channel, please streamline your comments to things that are beneficial. Things that reflect the fact that you've actually watched the video that you're commenting on and you've got value from it. Please, very important. It's important for me to know that you're actually getting value, not just that you're interacting with the channel, but that you're getting something out of it. Because you know you're spending your data and probably your money as well. So you must get something. So this must be a beneficial relationship. I insist. So please make sure that you're getting value, you know, as you interact with the channel. Don't forget that uh, if you have any questions or if you need further clarification, so if you want to take the conversation further, you can always leave a comment in the comment section or mail me at houseoflivingstones.gmail.com. And it's important that if you have done one, you don't need to do the other. So one of the two is okay. But if you need paid consultation, that's if... Uh, the legal challenge that you need uh, some clarification on or you need advice on is something that uh, requires tailored advisory, you know, that requires, uh, you know, a specific solution. You should book a paid consultation. You see the link in the description box if you're in doubt. You can also mail me at houseoflimingstones.com and I will provide a link to book a session. Don't also forget that if you are the type that does not want to interface with a human being you just need your questions answered i'm working on uh, providing uh, such services i already have a video on divorce it's comprehensive it answers practically all questions that you may need to ask if you want to take that step so you can buy that uh, video and just watch it uh, the link to buy is also in the description box. If you're in doubt, just mail me at houseoflimingstones.gmail.com. And if uh, you have any further questions after that, you can communicate with me via a dedicated email that will be shared in that video. And answers will be provided to your questions and your uh, uh, inquiries, you know. And we'll try to limit the human interaction as much as possible. That is if that is what you prefer. So let's go into defamation. Uh, I was looking through the Bible and I found about two places, two instances. I found Actually, I found two instances where the Bible talked about a good name. I found a place where it says that a good name is uh, better than great riches and another place where it says that a good name is better than precious ointment. So that would uh, mean that you know God is interested in you having a good name as an individual. And the law is also interested because the law has provided a way for you to safeguard your good name by way of uh, suing or filing for def by way of a uh, defamation so d what is defamation defamation is any written or printed or spoken or published article or information or a communication made about a person by another person to another person or sets of persons or to the general public which without lawful cause or justification is intended to defame that person we can't use defame which is intended to disgrace that person 
to cause them shame or ridicule or contempt or obloquy in the eyes and the mind and the thinking, you know, of uh, members of the society, right thinking members of the society, or which is intended to cause them disrepute, you know, or to impair their uh, personality or reputation, you know, in their professional line or their calling or their business. That's defamation. Essentially, there are three parties involved in defamation. There's a party that makes the defamatory uh, publication. There's the party about which that publication is made. And there's the receiving party, those to whom it is made. So, uh, but that uh, publication must be made to disgrace the victim to cause them ridicule, shame, you know, to induce an evil opinion of them, you know, in the mind of right-thinking members of the society. Now, the court has held in Nigeria in uh, a plethora of cases, and that is the current position that defamation uh, must uh, have caused such ridicule or shame or the effect that defamation is supposed to have in the minds and in the eyes of right-thinking members of the society, the general public, not just a section of the society. For instance, if you uh, defame a doctor, it must be that what you have said about him before it can be able to be defamatory must be something that would bring him to disrepute in the mind or the thinking of the general public, not just before doctors like him, because that's a segment of the society and they do not represent you know, the generality of the society. So that's one thing. The other thing is that uh, the statement need not to have indicted the person. That is, you don't need to have accused them of a wrong or a crime. It is sufficient that it causes them shame and disrepute, makes them look very ridiculous or contemptible in the eyes of the society. So defamation can be slander and it can be libel. Libel is the printed uh, version, uh, while slander is the oral version. So slander can be general comments that is made to someone, you know, about another person, but libel is uh, usually uh, publications made in, say, social media, print media, news media, TV, you know, videos and what, what have you. So that is uh, the difference between libel and slander. But both of them are defamation. Also, libel is actionable per se. When we say that something is actionable per se, it means that once it is done, there's a presumption that a damage has been caused to the victim and so they will be entitled to uh, damages, an award of damages from the court. Please watch the video where I differentiated between damages and damages you know there's damages that the court awards and there's the damages of the wrong that's been done which warrants the award of damages so libel is actionable per se once there's a printing of and publication of such defamatory uh, uh communication about a person there's a presumption that the deed has been done and the damage has been caused and they are already entitled once they can go to court they're entitled to uh, damages, you know, as soon as they can prove uh, all the necessary ingredients of uh, the wrong. Now, defamation can be a civil wrong and it can be a crime. In Nigeria, uh, defamation can be, uh, has been criminalized uh, by the Criminal Code and also by the Cyber Crimes Prohibition and Prevention Act of 2015. In fact, that is uh, the act that... Uh, can be easily relied on, you know, to uh, sue for defamation, especially the one that happens on social media. So I've taken some time to look at uh, the provisions of the law regarding defamation, and I want to read them out to you briefly. I'm reading section 24 of the Cyber Crimes Prohibition and Prevention Act 2015, and it says, 24B now, it says that... Uh, any person who knowingly or intentionally sends a message or other matter by means of computer systems or network that b he knows to be false for the purpose of causing annoyance, inconvenience, danger, obstruction, insult, injury, criminal intimidation, enmity, hatred, ill will, or needless anxiety to another or causes such a message to be sent, commits an offence under this act and shall be liable on conviction to a fine of not more than seven million naira or imprisonment for a term of not more than three years or to both such fine and imprisonment. So that's where we can find uh, defamation in the Cyber Crimes Act. If you look at sections uh, 
373 to 375 of the Criminal Code as well, you would find some provisions on defamation. Um, to prove uh, or to activate, you know, the uh, instrumentality of the law here in uh, the criminal instance, you need to file a report at the police station. They would open an investigation and the police will be the one to charge the suspect to court, you know, for defamation. But for civil defamation, you need to file an action yourself as if you're filing a civil suit. And uh, you need to prove the ingredients of uh, defamation. There are things that you need to prove which has been established in a plethora of cases. I'm going to uh, outline them and uh, I'm going to highlight them. So if you can prove those things, you have a case and then the court will hold for you and you would get the things you're asking for. Of course, you need to ask the court if you want damages, if you want uh, any type of damages, you need to ask the court for those things. But essentially, if you think or feel that someone has done what we have described as defamatory to you, you should go see a lawyer and then they will put you through the necessary steps. Or you go to the police if you think that it's criminal in nature. The catch is this, if you uh, go the criminal way, or the criminal route, that would mean that the police would do the charging and they would be the one to uh, prosecute their... Now, if you go the criminal route, that would mean that the police would be the one to charge the accused person or the suspect now, and then the suspect will become uh, the defendant and they will prosecute and uh, whatever is awarded, whether a jail sentence, the defendant will serve it, or if it's uh, a fine, it will be paid into the coffers of the state. But if we go the civil route, that would mean that uh, uh, the remedy that you would get would come directly to you. So you could ask for the person to make some, and the court could grant that the person will pay you a certain sum, will make some retraction, you know, publicly in the newspapers, and, you know, several other remedies. So uh, if you are a Nigerian, or if you're familiar with the Nigerian space, you would find out that... Uh, you would know that uh, recently an actress uh, uh, got uh, a TikToker arrested and tried for defamation. Now, because it came under the Cyber Crimes Act, that uh, portion of the Cyber Crimes Act that I read to you uh, is actually uh, titled uh, Cyber Stalking. So it's defamation, but it is uh, couched under Cyber Stalking. But uh, the implication of what was done in the TikToker's instance and in anyone's instance, based on what we have read out, it's defamation. But if you get to the police and make a report, they will do their job and they will not go about it. So the TikToker had called this actress a pimp and some other things. And then the actress had got her arrested and then she was tried for cyber stalking. According to the Cyber Crimes Act, and uh, she was sentenced to three years in prison or the option of a fine of 150,000 Naira. Now, uh, allegedly now, the act, uh, the TikToker had said that uh, someone had paid her 200,000, you know, to defame the actress. Now imagine paying 150,000 naira out of that 200,000. That's just by the way. But that's how defamation works criminally. But in a civil way, uh, in the civil route, uh, uh, you would be the one to uh, to set in motion the apparatus of uh, the law, you know, to get justice for yourself. Now there are three things that you must prove in any case of defamation. If you're especially civil defamation now, you need to prove that one, the words were defamatory. We've already explained what defamation is. So you just need to prove to the court that the words that were published or said were defamatory in nature. Two, you need to prove also that these words were referring to you, not just, you know, you just being suspicious. These words were referring to you such that it would be very difficult for anyone to hear those things and not think of you or think that this person actually intended uh, the words for you. And three, you have to prove as well that there was a publication. That is, you have to prove that these uh, defamatory comments or statements were made to a third party or third parties aside you. You're not just the recipient. So this is... Uh, something that needs uh <laughs> needs the company of other people you were not just the recipient you need to prove those three things that the words were defamatory that they were about you and that they were made to uh, a third party if you follow the john johnny depp versus amber Heard trials in the united states it was uh, a trial about defamation and so uh you know johnny had to prove those things that the words were defamatory that they were made about him because 
this is his ex-wife talking about she having been a victim of domestic you know violence domestic abuse you know in the washington post you know and uh of course if anyone read that they would think of johnny depp that she's just been divorced from so johnny was able to satisfy that leg and thirdly that it was made to a third party of course people read the washington post washington post is uh a widely known publication people read it you know so it was made to the general public and uh this is how you prove defamation those three legs you must fulfill them if you sustain a case whether a criminal case whether a civil case in sketch and ajagbom keferi it's uh, a nigerian case in that case the court held that the claimant had to prove that you know the statement uh made uh was intended to injure his character to injure his reputation you know that uh, the statement was harmful to him it was injurious to him it caused him uh, some sort of ostracization from uh the society you know it was uh it caused him content and ridicule and two uh the claimant had to prove that the statement was false just to discredit him the statement was false just to discredit him. and he had to prove that these statements you know lowered him in the estimation of right thinking members of the society so these things must be proven it's not every instance when someone insults another person that the other person will go to court and say i have been defamed get me some damages no you have to prove these things how has the statement hurt you? Is the statement false? Is it calculated to impugn your character? Is it calculated to lower you in the estimation of right-thinking members of the society? And was this statement made to public, uh, to the general public, not just you know a section of the society who are subscribed to some certain rules that the general members of the society have not subscribed to? So these things must be proven, and then you have a case of defamation. What does this teach us? You know, it teaches us that. If you're not certain of the things that you're about to disseminate, don't disseminate them. Don't, don't say hurtful, don't say uh, false things about other people, you know, because everyone has a reputation to protect. A good name like we started with, so it's important for you not to tamper with the good name of another person. And if yours is tampered with, you have a remedy at law. Once the claimant is able to establish, you know, uh, these things, uh, the claimant can ask for and the court will grant the claimant uh, general damages for loss of reputation and for uh, emotional distress. For loss of reputation, for emotional distress. Also, the claimant can ask for aggravated damages or the court can and will grant aggravated damages where it is shown that uh, the defendant, after the attention was called to this, they insisted and stood by what they published they refused to recant or they said or claimed that they were justified and that the statements were true or that the statement was okay for them it was okay for them to make the publication but when they came to court they were not able to successfully defend their stance that means they were not able to successfully justify those publications and they did not show any remorse in that instance the court can grant what is known as aggravated damages to punish the malice involved and the inability of uh, the defendants to justify their publications so uh, that's uh, the reward and now let's talk about jurisdiction I think that we're already answering the WH questions like we do all the time on the channel we've talked about what we've talked about who we've talked about uh, uh, now let's talk about when in Nigeria for slander you have to come within three years so after three years it started bad now that that would mean that you have some you have kind of uh, acquiesced with uh, what was published about you because why would you wait for three years when someone has said something that's uh, defamatory about you before you come to court so it's three years that's when then uh, where you come to court jurisdiction jurisdiction you uh, sue the person in the states where the person resides or as a place of business so if it's, you're suing a newspaper you should sue the newspaper where it is published you go to the high court the high court has jurisdiction so if you're suing somebody you should sue them in the state where they reside go to the high court of the state where they reside or where they have their business you'd recall that in johnny depp's case he's sued in virginia although amber heard does not live in virginia and both of them have no ties to virginia 
uh, Washington Post had a printer in Virginia. So they were publishing out of Virginia so he could sue in Virginia. Also because uh, uh, Virginia was reputed to have, you know, some great laws about defamation, some great defamation laws. So, you know, it was in his favor. And then the publisher had a printer in the state, so he sued there. So in Nigeria, you sue where the publisher of uh, the defamatory communication lives or where they reside or where they have their business. That is where you can sue and go to the high court. So uh, how we've talked about it, we've talked about the criminal aspect, we've talked about the civil aspect. We've covered the WH questions. Uh, it's important also to note, like I said, that mere insults will not constitute defamation. So if you're fighting with someone and in the heat of uh, passion, they say insulting things to you, damaging things to you, you know, even though those things may be false. When you get to court, they may not constitute defamation. But of course, you can always go to court just to test the waters and be certain. But uh, you should also talk to a lawyer so that they weigh options for you. For instance, in Bakari and Ishola, two men were fighting and then one said to the other, You know, the court held that those words were not defamatory. So that means that thief, you that just returned from, from prison, that is you that's an ex-convict, a thief. The court held that those words were not defamatory. So it could be that they were just things that were said in the heat of passion. And, you know, the, the reason why that would be, would be that, you know, if everyone goes to court for nasty things said in the heat of passion, <laughs> our court dockets would be full, and then it would, it would lead to absurdity. So to avoid that, defamation is serious business. It is serious, proving it is serious. So it's not in, any, in every case of uh, insult or even on true things that's been said to you that you run to court suing for defamation or run to the police, you know, asking them to open an investigation for defamation. In Bashar and Ugleway, the court held that defamation will still be actionable even where damages is not proved. And the court will infer damages in such cases where one, the words were written or printed, where two, the words impute the commission of a crime by the victim, a crime punishable with imprisonment by the victim, uh, two or three now, where uh, the words uh, impute, you know, a serious disease that would uh, naturally mean that the, the victim should be ostracized, you know, should be deprived of social interactions or social intercourse. In that instance, the court will infer that a damage has been done. Also, where the words impute an unfitness for uh, or a misconduct in a calling. For instance, a lawyer, that's a profession, where you have said things that uh, suggest that the lawyer is not competent, you know, or where you say something about a priest or a pastor showing that they are falling short of their calling, you know. The courts will impute that uh, we impute damages that the court the courts will infer that damages have been done even if they take you to court and they cannot prove those damages. So it's important to be wary of speech. There's freedom of expression, but uh, your right stops where uh, the right of another person begins. And for every right, there's an accompanying obligation or duty, you know, towards the other person who has equal rights as you. So that is defamation. After the court has uh, given its judgment, if the judgment is not complied with, you know, the, the victim now, the claimant can come back to court to commence contempt proceedings against the other party. If you find that you've been defamed, what should you do? The first thing to do ordinarily, you know, would be to write a letter, a letter of demand. I've done a video on letters of demand. Please watch it on the channel. I think I've even done a short on it as well. Please watch those things. So you write a letter of demand through your lawyer or directly to uh, the person asking them to retract, to make an apology, you know, listing your demands and giving them a time frame within which to do that. So if they do not, then you can go to court. But always explore alternative dispute resolution as a, a first instance. Also, defamation might not be something that you say, you sit down, you say to, sorry, sorry, let's go. It's important for uh, the remedy, whether out of court or in court, to include a counter-publication, retracting what's been said or published about you that's defamatory and setting the record straight 
for now and for posterity. So that's all I will talk to you about in this video. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section. I will see you in my very next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Toodles!